she has been doing a lot of weird sex doll stuff and all that. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> People say never. What the hell? It's cursed. This video has been cursed so far. Hey everyone, it's Mira Mangle. And it's Scarlet Cyanide. And welcome to another Mangled Morning. Woo! You look expensive. Good, because I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about crownless queens from RuPaul's Drag Race. Now, the reason why this came up was I, I did a post on, on um, Instagram and Twitter where I chose two queens that I thought are like the two greatest crownless queens. Well, the response to that was like, a lot of it was like very positive, but the majority of it was like, well, what about this person? No, this person's quaking. No, this, you know, it was always like, yeah. it was very that. So I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to count down the top 10 crownless queens of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. Now what that means, because obviously like, what does that mean? Because we made it up. In order to be eligible for this list, they had to have actually been close to winning a season. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also have to have like an amazing legacy that stands the test of time and have them have good heart. I think too. I think that's part of it too. Absolutely. Because the crownless queen always has your heart. Oh, totally. Yeah. They definitely have the charisma. Yes. But we're going to go ahead and get started. But before we do, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and join the Patreon where you can see all kinds of additional content you can't see on YouTube. Plus, you're helping support the channel. Ooh. Ooh. I kind of look like a little pageant girl too. Yeah. But also, no, I have big breasts, so I can't really do that. You can also support the channel by tipping on Venmo. Big shout out to. Jose C, to Frankie M, and to Stephen F. Now, Frankie M actually tipped on Cash App, so that works too. Oh. So it's dollar sign Mira Mangle on Cash App if you don't have Venmo. Convenient. Convenience. No. Oh, we love that. Tomorrow is um, season 13. Yes. Uh, so if you wanted to join us uh, tomorrow, you can do that during our after show live that airs right after the episode uh, for members of the Patreon and YouTube channel. Yay. So let's go ahead and get started. And at number 10 is going to be Ginger Minj. Of course. Runner up to Miss Violet Tchotchke. I really thought she was going to win. I thought I she... really thought it was going to be Ginger. Yeah. I was gagged that it wasn't. Same. I was too. I mean, she definitely had uh, checked all the boxes of a winner on the season. And there was a lot of controversy around that. And she even mentioned... <laughs> You know, when she came back for All Stars, that was definitely like one of her first little jokes right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. She won so many of the best challenges. And even when she wasn't winning, almost always in the top. Yeah. You know, uh, I will say looking back, it's kind of interesting that she was in the bottom twice. And, you know, there's that rule now. Well, not, not now, but like a rule that everyone talks about that was like unspoken of you can't be in the bottom more than once to win the season. Yeah. So that right there is like a premonition that she wasn't going to win. But it just very much felt like her time. We still... You know, with the exception of, well, now, now we've had Lawrence Cheney, Natalia over on Drag Race uh, Thailand, Thailand mm -hmm. but um, we still have not had a big girl winner from the U.S. franchise. Yeah. And I really thought she was going to be the one. Yeah. Yeah, I think most people thought that. I will say, you know, because we're not saying any of these people who did win didn't deserve to win by any means. That's not, that's why we're not doing like robbed queens. Right, right. Um, I think that over time, I'm shocked at how, how relevant and how popular violet stayed not to be not to read but yeah i am you yeah. know yeah no yeah that's very fair violet did a very good job of keeping herself current and not kind of like being pigeonholed into one type of violet right um but yeah ginger she i mean she's been doing just as well we might be seeing her again yeah so. i mean obviously all stars 2 did not work out well for her it just was too soon for her yeah. she was not I, it sounds like she wasn't in the right headspace for it either mm -hmm. um yeah so hopefully all stars 6 you know when mm -hmm. we get that news it could be her time could yeah. finally be her time she could be somebody to graduate off this list <laughs> yeah hey well up next at number nine we are headed over to the uk and it's the season one runner-up davina de Campo. Yes, of course, Davina. Oh. Davina, Baga, and Vivian had all won the same amount of challenges. I know this isn't the case for everyone, but it really felt like the people, most of the people were really behind uh, Davina. Mm -hmm. Well, there's even that meme, she was the people's vote. She feels like a winner. She already feels like one of just a legacy queen that um, should have a crown. It's like she is a crownless queen. That is what she is. Absolutely. I want her to come back so bad for some you know, reiteration of yeah. Drag Race and win. Um, because, yeah, the fact that she didn't win was, like, just uh, so heartbreaking. She wanted it so bad. And she kind of did have that underdog story in her own yeah. way. Even though it was a little self-produced. 
she did have the underdog story especially considering it was Div- uh, uh, the Vivian being the one that was that was <laughs> yes. the one that was kind of almost underrating her so yeah um, that that made it even more interesting and made you kind of root for Davina even more yeah hopefully all stars international does well and there could be a season two and she can be on season two because be. she could totally oh. slay and win i yeah, can see it i, I can, can see it. i can envision it well we're moving on and up next is crown it detox yeah detox is one of the original fashion queens of drag race yeah super high fashion does the 80s aesthetic but always brings it up to date mm-hmm. she slayed all stars th- uh two yeah all stars two <laughs> she slayed it she's just again one of those queens where it's like she is a, a icon a legacy queen who should have crowns. I know. I mean, she's just such a legend in the drug race world. She came really close, obviously, on her season. And, I mean, she just, I mean, has inspired runways. But Detox has just inspired so much for all the other drug race girls going forward. It is actually pretty crazy that she's number one. Yeah. Well, hopefully, now again, now that we have, like, a new option in terms of All-Stars International, maybe she's somebody who might be interested in doing that. I always hear her say she'll never compete again, but, you know, people say never. What the hell? It's cursed. This video has been cursed so far. Moving on, and at number seven is going to be the other runner-up from All-Stars 2. Mm -hmm. It's Katya. Yes. I mean, first of all, All-Stars 2 is, like, one of the heaviest stack seasons ever. Did you know it's the only season where every cast member has won a challenge? Cool. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's crazy. Like no other All Stars before or after has been that way. Wow. Every single one of them, all 10, had won a challenge on their initial season. Wow, that's amazing. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Katya is, she did so well on her initial season. The world was gagged when she didn't make it past that episode. That should have been a double save between her and Yeah. Because there was times for others to go. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was a gag that she did make it to the finale of her mm-hmm. initial season. And then she did make it to the finale of All Stars too she did exactly what the world wanted and what we needed from her yeah she held her own next to rolaska talks yeah i mean again it's like for detox and katya it's like if they didn't have to go up against like the ultimate drag queen from drag race they would have they both could have won i agree yeah katya detox legends people are still trying to catch up to what they're doing so yeah and i mean like especially for someone like katya because of course trixie won Mm -hmm. uh but i mean katya is still every i mean literally everywhere yeah still one of the biggest names one of the most followed she's she's Ever. she's that girl yes yeah, it's is. crazy how there's certain queens who are so like kind of like a door too where like they're just so popular mm-hmm. and yet sometimes like some of the most popular ones have never won imagine what her promo pictures would be like if she did have a crown it'd be really i don't know i see her just doing crazy stuff <laughs> i feel like she would wear it on her feet or something yeah she would do something crazy <laughs> she wouldn't yeah. wear it on her head no have you not she's been doing a lot of weird sex doll stuff and <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She she saw also somebody who, in terms of like style, is so unpredictable because mm-hmm. it's evolved over time to be more insane. Yeah. And then I feel like now she's kind of glammed up a little bit. But yeah, she, I guess, kind of a, you can kind of tell her mental state based on um, her, wardrobe. Her, her wardrobe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because it gets wild. Up next, we have one more queen from the UK, and it is the runner-up on UK season two, Bamini. Yeah. Bimini Bamboulash. Yes. I mean, talk about slaying a season. She absolutely, I think, was, I would say also maybe the fans, like, oh, yeah. number Same one thing. pick. Um, for sure, for the crown. She just had such a crazy strong showing on her season especially the last half those first four episodes she kind of fell in the middle of the pack most of the time mm-hmm. or towards the bottom like considering that first episode and uh but man when she came back after quarantine she was ready to go yep. the fact that she won four out of five challenges after returning is insane yeah it's, it's insane it is really crazy it's got to be some sort of record it, yeah, I mean to win, <laughs> it has to be. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I mean she's the she's won more challenges than anyone has ever won on UK. Yeah. There's so few queens, especially on an initial season, without all stars where there's double wins, to win for for uh, challenges in one season. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. You know that makes me think about the current season, season 13, and um, you know Simone has won four, mm-hmm. but I still feel like I know a lot of people online and a lot of the kids think it's between Simone and Rose. But I really feel like it's going to be between Gottmik and Simone. I think it's between Simone and Gottmik, too. Because they are, there's just something so next level about them, both mm-hmm. of them. In terms of just their presence, too. Everything about them. Everything about them. Their and brand. Gottmik's just been so consistent. Right. I know, I know we're not 
technically supposed to be talking about any of this on this video, but well, yeah, yeah. So. Well, my point in bringing that up was whether Simone or Got Mick wins, the other one is going to be on this crownless queen oh, list next time. A hundred percent. Because they both are, they both deserve to win. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, up next, it, we're in the top five now. Oh, hey. And uh, the next queen should have a crown, but she eliminated herself. It's Binda La Hey, yes. She's coming home. Going um, home. If Dela would have stayed, she would have won the season. There's two queens that were like the top two of the season, and they ended up not being in the top two. I one self eliminated and one fan vote. But, Sabotaged. So. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. We've we've had many discussions yeah. about how we feel about how All Stars Three turned out. Binda Lacram, I mean, there's nothing she can't do. There's literally nothing she can't do. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where it's like she, she's just an unstoppable force. She proved that on All Stars. Honestly, she did that on her initial season too. Mm -hmm. The only thing she couldn't do very well on her initial season was lip sync, mm -hmm. and she had so many opportunities to fix that on All Stars, and she did. She, <laughs> yeah, I mean. She right away in the talent show it was just it wasn't oh. a lip sync but her that performance well, in general the anaconda just... performance though yes that lip sync is her best one for it sure was. you're right it's iconic mm. she's totally a crownless queen and if they ever do a best friend race uh you know there's a lot of best friends like you know katia trixie juju raven that we all love but that's the pairing that the world should be uh, jinx and dayla, dayla are when... the pairing that everyone should be watched out for oh, yeah come on they would just demolish <laughs> come on just Ooh. Yeah. Steamroll it. And that's part of how, you know, Ben has remained so relevant with, with Jinx and that Christmas special was so big. It's so cute. Got to be even bigger because of quarantine, you yeah, know? Yeah, they picked, and it got picked up. By, by Hulu. Hulu. Of right. all places. How right. crazy. Amazing. Good for them. I think it's still on there, too. Like, Good. if you wanted to watch it today, you could. Hey. All right. Well, that brings us to number four. And at number four, we have Raven. Oh, come on. Two-time runner-up. Mm -hmm. Runner-up for season two and All-Stars one. And now, obviously, because Raven does Rue's makeup, she's not going to be eligible to keep coming back like that. Like, they physically could not have her do it. <laughs> oh, darn. But, I mean, you know, that tells you right there that she is a crownless queen. The, the fact that she is the one, she is the one that works for Rue and paints Rue. I was going to say, she touches Rue's face. You can't get any more iconic than that. Yeah, I mean, hey. So, yeah, Raven, of course, is that girl. She is the, you know, the queen that spawned a thousand people doing her face like oh. she literally revolutionized drag as we know it today by going on drag race <laughs> yeah her makeup is with that makeup. is the most iconic makeup from the show yeah. period period because yeah. it because it it's almost like it became it became the standard it did a hundred percent it became crazy. the standard yeah for what a drag queen's face should be painted like insane mm. i think the last two or three seasons of uk and us like she's always in an episode yeah yeah, because she did the season 12 walk. Yeah, she's been in quite... Yeah, she's she's always... She gets to... That is winning. I mean, that truly is. You can't get any better than that. I'm sure she makes more money than any other of the girls. Yeah. She gets to be on the show every year. She needs some sort of honorary crown. I know. <laughs> With Raven, she was very chilly, especially on her initial season. Mm -hmm. Yet somehow... Even though she's often very cold, she's somehow still so lovable. It's because, like, her reads were still so cute and funny. Like, you could tell that, for me, like, just little things that she would do were just still coming from a place of, like, humor. It's being so genuine, too. It's yeah. not It's not trying to be nasty. It's just, like, speaking authentically. Yeah. At number three, it's going to be Manila Luzon. Mm. She's gonna keep on losing. Oh. <laughs> so there were rumors that she was going to be on All Stars International, yeah. but it sounds like maybe that won't happen for her this time. But yeah. maybe one day she'll come back again. Run her up on season three. Mm -hmm. All Stars one, of course, you know, that was a mess. But yeah. we won't talk about that. <laughs> then All Stars four, she gets to come back and starts off a little slow, mm -hmm. but then wins like three, four challenges in a row. Yes. It was like insane. Yes. It was like, oh, here's this season's been to the crim. Right. Then uh, the makeover happened and they, they had to get rid of that gal. Ugh. A gag that she went out. I mean, it would it honestly be like Alaska. Alaska was in the bottom for the makeover challenge. Yeah, I'd be Could like you imagine if they had got her, sent her home? No. It would have been crazy. Yeah. You know, we talked about Detox's fashion, about Manila's too, because it's its own lane. It's something that it gives a name to this camp thing that no one else had, Camp Couture. Yeah, camp Couture. That um, she's kind of like coined as her own, but it's like, it makes it so that camp queens can't just be like i'm a campy queen this is what i do it's like no you can elevate it too yeah you have like a standard like she you does can make it fashion too absolutely she excels at that yeah mm. 
And I mean, yeah, she excels at so many of the different types of challenges because she she's won almost everything. She really has. She's won every type of challenge. Exactly. She's somebody, again, from those earlier seasons that has been able to maintain a massive presence and a name for herself. Yes all this time yeah which is which is not an easy thing to do yeah no she's definitely the big heavy hitter og rue girl for sure well speaking of uh heavy hitters from the early seasons yes at number two is jujube oh uh, our little love bug jujube jujube a, a three-time finalist <laughs> I know. never a winner season two she did not win any challenges but we got to see her she became a lip sync assassin yes. and she came close a few times but uh did not win anything she also, won our hearts oh yes she did <laughs> i mean you know we talked about this you and i uh, we were looking at something the other day and we realized like for the first four or five years of the sh of the show period like seasons like one through five she was the most followed queen from the franchise yeah which is wild it is wild yeah. and so she like she was pop she was the most popular for so long all stars uh one raven and juju did well but also like because it was so short and so little like they were in the bottom a lot yeah they never won there either uh but then you know when juju came back for all stars five man we got to see Ju juju in full full form and full force yes and we always say if it had been like any other season of all stars where there was two winners each episode she would have won like four challenges right because she slayed every single challenge yeah. she really did i mean there was challenges like that hotel challenge where we were like man is this just horrible can no one do this but no juju did juju yeah. turned it out she turned it out every she, single time she showed you how you could do it yeah juju just came back on on all stars five with just so much momentum and it really was like we've said and she said juju b 2.0 it was good juju yeah like time literally only made her just better god i mean even looking back the fact that there was challenges where she was in the bottom like snatch game where she was the best one on snatch game but she was in the bottom because everyone was in the bottom yeah, yeah. and again uh, we always say looking back it was the most iconic performance and probably should have won because it's the only one we all still quote and still remember. Yeah, I know. Crazy. It is. It's it's <laughs> nuts. Now the rumor is she is going to be on All Stars International, mm -hmm. and I swear to God, if I have to watch Juju lose again, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can mentally take it. Yeah, torture. I don't know if I can take it. You know, it's funny. I had some folks on um, Twitter and Instagram when I said something about like, hopefully this is Juju's time to finally win. Like, I, you know, some I said something like that. And um, I had some folks that were like, well, it's international. It would be weird if an American won. And I said, well, if they don't want an American to win, they shouldn't have an American don't, compete. Yeah, don't put them on there. I thought that was just a weird thing to, for people to think. Like That is weird. I hope that's not a general consensus because it's like they're there to compete to win. So if they don't want an American to win, they then shouldn't have them on. Don't have them on. Because exactly. they could have easily done an internationals without Americans. Right. Since we have our own all-stars, you know. Exactly. Juju has her own show on TLC. They got renewed for a second season. Ooh. Um, what is it called? Drag Dragnificent. Oh, okay. Boy, that took a minute. Well, because they they did a pilot and it was originally called Drag Me Down the Aisle because it was going to be all about uh, brides. But then they changed it to Dragnificent so they could make over anyone. Okay. Well, which was a smart idea. Uh, but yeah, that got renewed for a second season. So she'll be back on that again. Ooh. All right. So that brings us to number one. And at number one is going to be Hallelu, Shangela Laquifa Watley. Of course. You knew she was going to be number one on another one of our lists somehow, some way. The slayage that she did on All Stars 3 was a bit of the crim level. She slayed every single week. And um, it just, it was so heartbreaking that she didn't get that chance to even compete for the finale because of the jury thing. It's just so weird. It was the dumbest it was thing literally ever. literally the weirdest it, thing. I it, did not understand what was happening. I still don't understand what happened. <laughs> it could have been a, you know, looking back on it, it could have been like a jump the shark moment for the franchise, you know, like mm -hmm. changing the rules in that way so that like it's different, like, cause they had changed the rules twice that year, right? So yeah. for the regular, all, for the regular season, you had to lip sync for the crown. That's why even though we all thought Shay was going to win, she didn't win that year. Yeah. But at least they still had to compete. Like, they all got to still compete to do something. Yeah. Versus, like, this was like, you just shot them in the in the foot. Yeah. Like, you're not allowed to even try to lip sync or compete. It's so weird. It's, it was really dumb. Yeah. Shangela deserved that crown, and I still think she should have a crown. Yeah. So, again, now that we have an All-Stars International, maybe she, <laughs> maybe she can uh, come back one day. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, it would be... It is kind of one of those things where, especially now that that idea and it's been filmed, that there is an All-Stars International, 
it's kind of one of those things where it's like it's inevitable eventually oh, Shangela will pop up come on. in a it's, box somewhere yeah I mean it's the all time like gag of the yeah. series so bring her back put her in the box let's go <laughs> <laughs> also you know we have to talk about the work Shangela has done post Drag Race too. Mm -hmm. I mean both times like she has been one of the and she calls herself the working queen yeah. she came here to work and I don't know very few queens work harder than she does yeah She's on everything. She's got the show on HBO. It was so good. Yep. Um, she's just been everywhere and done everything. Star is Born with Lady Gaga. Yeah, I mean, crazy. can you get any more iconic? <laughs> now, looking at this list, especially our top four, what is wild is like, my God, why do the early season girls, season two and three, always get shortchanged? I don't know. It's really not fair. I know. Because like, all these girls are from two and three. Two and three. Yeah. Shangela from both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like they will not. There's like some sort of curse. Yeah, I know. Season season two and three cannot win an All Stars. Just so many like good good queens, and I don't know. I don't know what happens, but yes. This list could literally be like looking at the full list. It could be like a list of the ten best. Yeah. You know what I mean? This like, could be your All Stars International. Oh, that would be that would be terrifying. That's that's next level. Yeah. That would my my brain would explode. Kim Chi could oh. definitely fit on this list. Yeah. Nina Flowers. Oh, totally. Beyond iconic, yeah. beyond crownless queen. They're both like next level. And I think, you know, I doubt we'll ever see Kim on All Stars, but she doesn't need it. She's got a makeup empire, just like Trixie, yeah. who did win. Well, that is our list today. Let us know what you think about these crownless queens. We're gonna head on out of here. And we are so glad you got to see us. Bye. Bye. <laughs>